It's a calm and sunny day in the Ndiweni village in Zimbabwe's Matebeleland South Province. Few would believe that less than a year ago, this part of the world was in the grip of an intense drought, driven by one of the strongest El Nino events ever witnessed. More than 60 million people worldwide were rendered food insecure as large swaths of otherwise productive land lay barren. Dolly Dube, a livestock farmer, recalls that the drought led to severe water scarcity, poor felt quality and limited pasture availability. Many animals died and those that barely made it were in terrible condition. <laughs> So imbuzi zami za zinga yandi, zisifa, nga laloazi. Koto ngaboni kuchi ngono ngefu ndela, ukwenze lukuchi ngipumelele, ezi fuyo ni zami. Ngakwenza kona loko, ngaboni imbuzi zami mama zinyana menga, safi, ngubangasa ilo loazi, ngivigela, nizela. Dolly now volunteers as a paravet. She was trained by government extension agents with the support of FAO's Emergency and Resilience Building Program for Southern Africa. The program further supported the rollout of livestock vaccinations, provided survival feed for animals, and constructed water points for the livestock. Dolly gets her drugs from animal health management centers that have now been equipped with solar systems to manage the cold chain facilities, ensuring that vaccines and drugs are stored in optimum conditions. She also gives basic tips to fellow farmers on how to take care of their livestock and prevent death. <laughs> Given the magnitude of the crisis across multiple countries, timely and coordinated support was crucial in assisting vulnerable families to restore agricultural production and regain their livelihoods. FAO worked closely with other stakeholders and the government departments in countries that were hardest hit by the drought, such as Lesotho. This drought came in in 2015, this time around. And uh, for Lesotho's case, uh, it was a drought that had not been seen in a number of years. Uh, it was very difficult for the farmers to get into their normal uh, planting. However, due to the early interventions, farmers such as Pomolo Tignane, who lives with his 86-year-old mother and two adopted sons, are looking forward to a good harvest this year. Pomolo received seed and fertilizer together with training in innovative conservation agriculture techniques. Ili me crazy veg. Mule mungwa pabalo ya mungwa wabu. Moholi mule mungwa fugu ya di pofo. Emergency response, such as that received by Pumolo, was also crucial in averting protracted relief operations and increased long-term vulnerability, which can also lead to migration as income and labor opportunities cease to exist. Mateko Raseboko, who received vegetable seeds and shade nets to preserve soil moisture and protect her crops from the intense heat, is proud of how successful her enterprise has become. Climatic patterns are evolving as cyclic droughts, floods and cyclones become more intense and frequent globally. You need to inform ERI, plan ERI, respond ERI and also respond in unison. The inspiring stories of Dolly, Pomolo and Mateko show that with timely planning and coordinated and early response, communities can once again thrive as they become more resilient to future crises.